So we've been getting quite a few acres covered with furrow force now, got experience with it. Really hasn't been much of a learning curve. Uh, the instructions helped us get things going and we really haven't changed much settings since. We have the automated version I can control with our Gen 3 2020. We opted for that. But uh, the first day uh, we set the, the depth of it and we haven't really changed it. We've been in a lot of conditions uh, we've been planting soybeans into a little bit of cereal rye, we planted corn into some cover crop. Uh, we had one field we went and tilled because we did some tile install. So we ran it through that and uh, right now I'm planting popcorn and wheat stubble that was about 95 bushel on the yield last year. So there's plenty of straw out here left over. So we're, we're going through that. We've been in all kinds of conditions, haven't really had much trouble. I haven't really had any trouble, I should say. Um, I've always kept my applied downforce map up on the iPad, and now I've learned to split screen. I always, I still want to see my applied downforce because that tells you some stuff, but now I'm running my closing actuator pressure on the furrow force. The only issue I've had with it is, and this is a question a lot of people have, and I saw when I was reading online about this, trying to learn if this is a system we wanted or not, was rocks, does it pick up rocks? So uh, we do have the rock guard kit on it. We are in no-till. Um, from what I see, that seems to help with rocks. I'm coming up on 2,000 acres planted for the season. I picked up six rocks. And how did I know I picked up six rocks? Well, with the automated system, that closing actuator pre pressure will show up uh, a red line on that row. We'll let you know it's plowing. Or you might see behind you a darker row, like when it happens, like a gauge wheel falls off or something because um, that, that rock gets stuck and it's just plowing, but I've caught those pretty quickly um, thanks to the iPad and watching behind me. Really hasn't been much of an issue. There's um, five holes you can put the closing discs in, so front to back on the furrow force unit. Um, I just went with a suggestion in the instructions, started on two and four. Since so you have problems with rocks, go to a one and five on opposite sides to get them the farthest apart they can be. That hasn't been an issue for me. Uh, the rock guard has three settings, three sets of bolt holes. I've been running in the middle setting. I haven't bothered adjusting it. So six rocks and 2,000 acres, uh, that's no big deal. Get out of the tractor a few times. So I really haven't had an issue with that. We have been looking for a good closing system for several years. We have struggled in the past to get the trench all the way closed, kind of leaving some open slots sometimes. and. With the no-till and the covers we do, we got all this wheat out here. This is kind of wetter than I would like it to be right now, but um, we're almost done. Uh, we got a window here today and tomorrow, and then it looks like we might get a bunch of rain again this weekend. June will be sneaking up on us, so we're going ahead and doing this. But this this cover really uh, doesn't let the sun hit the soil directly, so it doesn't dry out quite as fast. But the furrow force is closing those slots. I've been able to walk out in the fields and I can tell you, I don't need to pull up my iPad or anything. I can tell you which way the tractor was going. I can tell you which half of the planter had furrow force and which didn't pretty easily just by looking at it. When I get to the end of the field here, we'll just hop out and look real quick, see what we can see. Shut my vac motors down so it's not so loud out there. Let's go take a look. So we got the two cast spikes on this side. When we come over here, we've got the furrow force. So let's see what we got going on. As far as running it, no big deal. There, there's two rings, it's kind of dirty now to see them, but there's like an inch and a half ring and a two inch ring that helps you set your depth. This is your depth here, you just flip up to the detent and you crank it one way or the other to go up or down, and lock it back in place. And this is the load sensor, that's what makes it automated. And here's the airbag and that keeps your depth and pressure for you. There's, there's really not much to it. Here's a spot out in this straw where this is the center of the planter, this row right here of straw. So here's the side with the cast spikes over here. You can see I got slots still a little bit open. It's kind of pretty wet right here. Spikes just kind of dimple in. We we'll go over to the next row to the furrow force and it's kind of, it's filled in. It's pretty wet. It's kind of, you know, you can kind of get your finger in the trench there, but it's still it's closed it up and covered the seed with dirt. It's better better over here. But it just it does a better job. This is a particularly wet spot I went through. So OEM cast spike closing side you can see 
trench is fairly open right there. We got more rain coming, so that'll help that. We get over here to the furrow forest side. It's pretty good and closed up, and this is probably the toughest conditions we've been in. Here again, if we look on the end row, this is a tough area. The shop's right up there, so we're loading trucks out here. It's high traffic area along the road. Here's the, the spike side. So it's still kind of, you know, we got some open stuff here in this tough area. Slots a little bit open right here. Go over the furrow force side. It's all good and closed up. Looks pretty good to me. This was one of the first bean fields we planted, and this is the regular closing side of the planter, and you can tell by the track. See, there's little dimples where the spikes go in, and sometimes the slot's not quite closed. Beans are starting to come. You can see a few here. If we go over to the other half of the planter, this, this row of standing stalks, that's the center of the tractor. We get over to the furrow force side. There's just clearly more soybeans up and out of the ground so a day or two ahead maybe on this side so that's good to see they get that much more sunlight i'll come back after planting and use the emergence flagging kits and see how that pans out if the furrow force side has better emergence than the regular side of the planter and then of course we'll come back to harvest i'm not splitting hybrids on the planter i'm keeping the same hybrid in the planter all the time and marking one side furrow force so it'll be in the variety locator the combine will tell us a story over all the corn acres.